What is up guys? Today I am going to talk to you about this. It is a plastic lens from a Diana camera. If you're not familiar with Diana cameras, I'll tell you about them in a bit. But basically, this is a toy lens that you can screw on to a Nikon camera using this adapter. So there's two pieces here. I'm gonna be talking about both of them. I'm gonna share with you some of the results that I got using this lens on my Nikon D780. And I'm also going to share a few of my thoughts on it, both good and bad. So first off, what is the Diana camera? The Diana camera is a cult classic toy camera. So it's a Lomographic point and shoot camera. It is made completely of plastic and it was originally manufactured as essentially a toy for children to kind of learn photography or at least just get some experience taking pictures. It has a plastic body and a very simple lens and it takes 35 millimeter film. The camera first hit the market in the 1960s and it was manufactured so cheaply that it was often given away as a premium or a prize at carnivals and fairs, raffles, etc. At one point, it was sold for as little as 60 cents per piece. Eventually, demand for the Diana died off despite the low price point and production ceased around the 1970s. This camera might have faded into obscurity like many a cereal box toy camera before and since had it not been for its signature Lomographic look. This look was so distinctive that it landed the Diana camera in the Lomographic Hall of Fame alongside the equally famous Holda. Due to the shape of the lens and the structure of the body, the camera captures images with this intense vignetting. Vignette, vignetting, vignette, vign with this intense darkness around the edges. And here are some examples from Lomography's website. Pretty cool. People love to also crank the saturation and contrast on these images to give it this really like intense early 2000s vibe, which I think is actually coming back into style. <laughs> Today, a reproduction of the camera is sold by the company Lomography. Now, I have talked about a few of Lomography's products on my YouTube channel before, and this will certainly not be the last time I cover something that's available on their website. But needless to say, the work that this company does in compiling and reproducing and providing rare and unusual ways of taking photographs is fantastic. And I was quite excited to see that they are manufacturing this as well. So the version of the Diana camera that is now being manufactured is available on Lomography's website. And instead of just like a single molded plastic body, it's actually sold as a system camera, which is a camera with interchangeable parts. In the case of the modern Diana camera, it has interchangeable lenses, flashes, and film backs. So that is where this comes in. I might've gotten carried away browsing the art lenses on Lomography's website, and most of them, <laughs> are a bit pricey for me, unfortunately. So imagine my surprise and delight when I found one of these on the shelf at my local photography shop. Well, <laughs> I thought it was one of these. It came in this package and it was actually just the adapter. <laughs> so I got it home and I opened it up and I was like, this does not look right. And what this does is it lets me use the lens with my Nikon camera. The package itself did not contain the lens but I bought the adapter for $17, thinking that I was buying the lens as well. So I resolved to go back to the camera store and try to find a lens that would go with it. I was already $17 in the hole, and that was not a hole I was willing to climb out of without a lens to show for it. So I go back to the store a little while later, and boom, there's this beautiful Diana lens right there in the discount bin. I suspect that this lens was not actually for sale in the discount bin, but it was in fact a lens that had fallen off of one of the Diana cameras that was on the shelf above the discount bin. I looked. There was no lensless cameras, so they all had lenses. I couldn't see where it had come from. I asked the sales associate how much I could buy this for, and she shrugged and said, 12 bucks. And I said, deal. And I slapped down some cash and then got out of there quick before anybody questioned the validity of my purchase. So all told, the set, the adapter, $17 plus some change, and the lens, $12, even together, cost me about $30. You will probably have to pay a bit more than that for this, specifically because they don't actually really sell just the lens independently on the Lomography website. They have a glass version available for $64. You can also just buy the camera with the interchangeable lenses and that will come with one of these lenses. So those are your options if you wanna try this out. Now that I've given you like the whole backstory, <laughs> let's talk specs. This lens is a 75 millimeter lens with three focal settings. As you can see, maybe focus, there we go. Three focal settings. So you can adjust the focal settings using this inner ring. And so you actually have to poke your little fingers into the inner ring and shift it around. It has one setting for things that are one to two meters away, one setting for things that are two to four meters away, and one setting for things that are four plus meters away. If you try to take a picture of something that is closer than a meter, it will not work. <laughs> it will not focus. You cannot get a photo in focus. Don't try it. Trust me, I did. It is, however, very good for street photography because most things that you take pictures of when you're out doing street photography are gonna be more than four meters away. 
So you can zone focus very easily by setting it to the four to infinity setting. And then almost everything is in focus, relatively speaking, <laughs> because nothing is perfectly in focus with this lens, but most of the images that you take will be nice and relatively focused. Now it doesn't say on here what the f-stop is, it's fixed, of course. On the Lomography website, it says that these lenses come in f8, f11, f16, and pinhole. And judging by my experimentation with this lens and what I've needed it as, it is an f11. So it's great for daylight, but I can also shoot in darker situations with it, especially since the ISO settings on my Nikon D780 go so high. I even managed to take some night photography with it, which shooting at f11 at night is a bit of a nightmare, <laughs> but I tried it just for the sake of it. I'll talk about my results with this in a minute, but I do want to mention one thing about this lens that I do not like, and that is that it pops off incredibly easily. I will show you, I will demonstrate. So this is the lens mounted to the adapter. I'm just gonna like, oh no, <laughs> see how it flies off? It doesn't take very much at all. And when you're walking around with your camera, on your hip, you can occasionally brush this and just like a single brush in the wrong direction will cause it to go flying. When this is mounted to a plastic film camera, it doesn't matter at all if the lens flies off. When this is mounted to a $3,000 full frame digital camera, it matters a lot <laughs> when the lens flies off and just exposes the sensor to the open world. It happened one time while I was crossing the street at a rapidly expiring crosswalk. The numbers are taking down, I'm like running to catch it. It's like four, three, two. And then I like snag the lens as I'm running and it goes flying off into the imminently active intersection and I have to scramble for it. And I know that somebody saw me do that and didn't know that this was a $12 lens and thought I was an incredibly dumb beast for letting that happen to my equipment. It was embarrassing, it was a bad experience. Be really careful of that. Honestly, I would recommend just like taping it on, put some masking tape there and just like save yourself a lot of hassle. So yes, a hazard, beware. Let's talk about my results. I actually did another video about this lens and it was a street photography video in which I was taking pictures with this lens on. So if you'd like to see that video, go check it out. I will kind of put it here, but also I'll put it at the end of the video so you can click on it after this video. But yeah, that was really fun. I took a lot of street photography with this over the course of the summer. I was really carrying it around with me a lot last summer specifically because it is so light. You know, it weighs about as much as like a, like a, hmm, wait. Honestly, approximately as much as a loony. How light a lens is, is, is honestly a very underrated quality because I have a lot of extremely heavy lenses and I also have shoulder problems. So I found that the photos that turned out the best with this lens were the ones of subjects that were far away and lit by a point of light that was behind me. So. The sun is behind me, it's pointing directly onto my subject in front of me, my subject is more than four meters away, that's a good shot. Anything that is not lit from behind me tends to get this really, really gross kind of look. When you shoot with a glass lens into a point of light, you get this beautiful like lens flare that you know a lot of people like. This doesn't give a lens flare. This gives a lens smear and blur. Because of this, I found that golden hour, obviously, was the best time to shoot with it because it's really, really easy to kind of direct yourself and position yourself relative to the sun when the sun is at that harsh of an angle. So I don't like the way that this lens captures direct light, but I do like the way that it captures radiant and reflected light. The light's coming from behind me, it's bouncing off a shiny or bright colored object in front of me, and that glow that comes off the object produces a really, really beautiful halation, and it really delivers that dreamy analog vibe without actually being taken on film. Areas of super dense detail that are brightly lit will blow out and become these like almost brush strokes of color and it looks super, super gorgeous in my opinion. Seriously, the way that light interacts with this lens I think is what makes this lens so interesting to shoot with. So taking pictures of things that have interesting interactions of light is really like the number one thing I would recommend. Some of the photos I took, I edited intentionally to have this like classic film color palette. And honestly, I think it was really effective. Like they do look like they were taken on film Specifically, I think, because we are so used to seeing film photos taken with plastic lenses and we're so unaccustomed to seeing digital photos taken with plastic lenses that when we see a photo that has the same lens aberration caused by the plastic lens, we just automatically assume it's film, or at least our brains do. That said, there are some photos I took that at first glance, you can't really tell that there's anything even interesting about them. They just look like they were taken with a regular lens on a regular camera. And those are the photos that do not feature any distinct points of light. So if it's not completely sunny out, I probably honestly wouldn't recommend trying to shoot with this lens. I think that's all my thoughts on this. That's 
<laughs> that's everything I had to say in this video. And that's everything I wrote in my script. So, yeah, hopefully you guys get some some kicks out of shooting with this lens. I would absolutely recommend that you do go and get one, try it out, tape it onto your camera. Don't make the same mistake that I did. I had to buy a sensor cleaning kit pretty quick after my experimentations with this lens. You can actually see there's a little bit of dirt inside it, and that is dirt. It just goes directly onto my sensor when I put this lens on my camera. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have another video out next Monday. And then after that, probably not because I'm going to Paris for Paris Fashion Week. Thank you again. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you tried this lens, I'd like to hear about it. And I will see you next time. Take care, guys. Stay sharp. And don't forget to keep shooting. Bye, guys. <laughs>